Welcome back. You're tuned in to Bazaar Morning Call. Hope you're having a good morning. Well, plenty of numbers came out yesterday. And one such talk that came off the high point of the day was uh, Kalyan Jewelers. Well, uh, it was a rather mixed quarter, actually. Their revenue and the EBITDA saw a healthy growth, although the profit declined due to an exceptional loss of around 33 crores. Mr. Ramesh uh, Kalyana Raman, the executive director at the company, joins us on the show. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Ramesh. Thanks so much for joining in. Let's focus on a couple of points. First, you know, when your numbers hit the exchange yesterday, I suddenly looked at Twitter and I saw Kalyan Jewelers was trending. But not because of the numbers. There was some kind of speculation that maybe, in fact, uh, you know, uh, there was questions on uh, the purity of the gold that you're selling. So I want you to respond to that, point number one. And then we'll focus on, uh, you know, the numbers as well as that uh, sale sure. of non-core assets. Go ahead. Okay, so the purity, you know that we are a hallmark jeweler for the past, what, 15, 16 years now. Whenever the hallmarking was introduced, we were one of the volunteers. Voluntarily, we came up with uh, selling only 100% hallmark gold. So fake news goes around and we will not be able to do any uh, major uh, things on that except going legally. It is, uh, it is actually a fake news which was there in 2018. And okay. uh, two people were arrested for spreading those fake news and again uh, it has come uh, to the light again and again we are moving legally and uh, taking legal action against it and uh, people also know uh, what to believe what not to believe and uh, that is what i want to say about the uh, so, the, the, the fake news so that, roaming around. so there is no truth to this this was just uh, you know fake news that was out and you're considering legal actions uh, as well we just thought we you'll respond to this before we move yeah. on. Now, let's... Can I just one yeah. uh, Ramesh, I mean, uh, why is this coming up again and again, if you can, because you said this has come up earlier as well. I mean, this is, in this business, you would agree, uh, trust is everything, right? I mean, yeah. uh, most of the advertising is also based on trust, uh, that you can trust the product that we are selling. Why is this coming uh, again and again, and, and what's, no, the, what's the way to fix this? Yeah. yeah, so all brands are seeing such fake news roaming around. Digital media has a lot of positive aspects, but of course, uh, these kind of negative aspects are also there. Government is also now trying to come up with a solution for protecting these fake news. And now the advantage is that people exactly know what to believe and what not to believe. They go and search. If they see something, they go and search and see whether there is some uh, reality in it. And of course, I don't want to... Uh, go deep into it as to who uh, does this fake yeah. news and uh, why, etc. Because that is not in our yes. control, right? The things in right. our control is that we give four-level assurance certificates at the store, we give okay. assurance for the purity, buyback, and brand, as you know, is most, one of the most trusted brands in the country. Got it. Sure, sure. Got that. No, I mean, of course, shareholders are a bit concerned, right? As you would imagine. I mean, you can see it in the stock as well. Uh, it's down almost 20% from the 52-week high. But we take your assurance on board. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the aircraft as well. You reported that exceptional loss of 33 crores and it was because of the reduction in the fair value of the aircraft that you hold. Can you tell yeah. us uh, when do you plan to sell it? Any kind of timeline that you can share with us? And what is the plan with the cash that you uh, generate post the sale? So that, that is again a part of our strategy which we decided last year wherein we want to liquidate certain non-core assets in the company, which includes the aircraft. And we already signed LOIs to uh, sell those aircraft. And that is why the one-time write-off is there in the books. And uh, the proceeds will uh, go and decrease our uh, bank exposure or uh, meaning uh, anything which is more capital efficient is what we will do with the aircraft. Uh, yeah. uh, the no, but can money you give us a timeline? Uh, can you give us some firm timeline on when so this usually uh, the, the process LOI will be completed? Been signed. Yeah, LOI has been signed, but uh, we should keep a five to six months to conclude the full transaction because it is the process which has to be followed and uh, okay. it should be ended in fights. Okay, five to six months, uh, got that. What is yeah. the updated debt number and, uh, you know, where does it head? I'm looking at your finance cost. I think it was around 300 crores for the last year, which is low on a year-on-year -year basis. So what is the updated yeah, number? So finance cost has been reduced majorly because we increased our gold loan quotient, which comes with a lesser... Yeah. Uh, rate of interest and on a console level the debt is in the range of 3500 crore there is no major difference between the debt level in the last year and this year okay. so 3500 crores of consolidated debt you said that you know apart from this uh, plane sale there are other non core assets that you're looking to sell as well anything that uh, would fructify in this calendar year and how much could you generate 
what are the further debt reduction plans in that sense no so uh, as a part of the strategy this year we have decided because usually if you look at the history of the uh, company all the money generated all the profit generated we used to uh, invest again to expand our showroom network but now mm. we have gone into the foco model where the expansion is completely taken care by the franchisee partners and there is going to be a lot of uh, liquidity lot, lot of cash in the in the system in the running financial year and we have decided that 40 to 50% of the profit generated will mm. go for debt reduction as well as uh, paying back our invest so uh, dividends uh, ramesh uh, 40 to 50% of profits to repay debt and uh, yeah uh, and and yeah. payback and so, and payback investors yeah so uh, that's that's uh, that, that's two, 200 to 300 crores uh, so to be used the for debt the debt reduction debt reduction we 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 will reduce 15% of our gross debts that's the target okay. for the running financial year and okay. when you reduce your debts we work with banks on a very traditional basis where we have certain collateral land parcels which have been mortgaged with banks that was mm -hmm. the traditional way of uh, getting exposures in banks in our sector i'm talking about because we started 30 years before and sure. that is how we have been uh, uh, getting exposures from banks and once we pay back the debt we yeah. we uh, will uh, will uh, negotiate with banks to take out the collaterals which has been mortgaged and there are a lot of non core assets land mm. parcels which we will yeah. again liquidate so that Our, land parcel liquidation is going to be a 2 3 year process because okay. the repayment is going to come every year and uh, it is going to be a process okay and i just one last uh, point i mean if i look at uh, your business right your B india business uh, revenues in the fourth quarter have grown 17%. If I look at Titan's business, which is, of course, a much larger base, their revenues grew uh, 24%. Uh, yeah, now, so, uh, could you tell us what is happening business-wise? I mean, are things uh, looking up? Uh, what will 2000, uh, FI24 look like in terms of top-line growth? So, first of all, we are, we are extremely happy with what has happened. Uh, the outcome in Q4 and mm -hmm. why we should not compare with uh, other brands is because it depends upon you know the pre the the previous year uh, Omicron and the what you call COVID impact would have been different for brands because South non South revenue mix is not the same with okay. the competition so uh, that is why it is not an apple to apple comparison on revenue base because the previous year impact will surely uh, what you call reflect in this year uh, revenue, right? Meaning okay. the comparison. So otherwise, right. if you look at Q1, yeah. uh, as we speak the first 45 days, mm -hmm. the revenue growth has been very strong. Akshatrathiya has been strong. And the revenue growth is much higher than the... What is the Q4. revenue growth for the year, sir? If you could tell us, Ramesh, very quickly, what is the revenue growth you're looking at for the year and a rough margin number that we should work with? Very quickly, we're running out of time. Yeah, so not a number because we don't we don't give a guidance on the number, but we are opening 52 showrooms and the revenue is going to come. The last year opened mm -hmm. stores, the full year revenue is going to come. The SSG is in the range of 5 to 6 percent. So late teen revenue growth is only going to come with store expansion and rest from the SSG and the full year operation of uh, the showrooms which we opened last year. Okay, we'll uh, let you go on that note. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, let's slip into a quick break. On the other side of the break, Mitesh Thakkar and Sudarshan Sukhani will join in for some technical trades. Stay with us.